Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik, Cable Video Practice Leader of Live Reading. I'm here in Denver at SCTE's Cable Tech Expo Show. We're talking about optimizing and monetizing Wi-Fi networks with Amdocs and Cable Labs. I'm here with Justin Cowell, who's Vice President of Access Technology for Cable Labs, and Ken Rullier, who is Chief Technology Officer of Cable, Broadband, and Satellite for Amdocs. What are the most promising areas for Wi-Fi monetization by cable operators? Shall I start? Please, go ahead, okay. Ken. So, so if, when I look at monetization and Wi-Fi, what are you going to do with it, right? What's that big business plan in the sky, maybe you want to call it, right? So, so I think you've got lots of opportunity with the mobility play of what goes on in data or the rest of cable services, right? So how do we take and say, here's what we do today, and how do we put it on a mobile play and pay for it, you know, get some people to pay up and the premiums, et cetera, for it. Not, not, not in a bad way, in a good way, it's a good service. You've got to make that infrastructure build out to give that quality of service. But I think if I could take any of my services that I do today and add new additional over the top type services, et cetera, I've got a great monetization play on my Wi-Fi networks. Justin, let's turn to you. What kinds of technological advancements are necessary to make those monetization methods possible? Yeah, thanks for that question, Alan. So, uh, fundamentally, if you take it up a notch, Wi-Fi is the fundamental way that cable services are delivered today uh, uh, to, to subscribers. Uh, the big opportunity as, as cable moves forward with their Wi-Fi strategy is to actually carry on that Wi-Fi from in the home into businesses and venues. And when you move Wi-Fi from a single access point to a broader uh, mobile type deployment, that's where the opportunities for new technologies and advances come into play. And in particular, we're focused around improving a few different areas, uh, and we're seeing those come out in the marketplace today. One of them is radio resource management. This ensures that access points and clients are always on the best unlicensed channel. Secondly, Passpoint, which makes the selection and authentication to a Wi-Fi network much more like mobile, completely transparent to the end user. And finally, RF performance. When you're deploying a Wi-Fi network, keeping tra as much traffic as you can on Wi-Fi becomes fundamental to monetizing that business model, and a keen focus on RF performance will enable that. Okay, very good, Ken. Given that, what's the role of policy control in enabling those kinds of services to be offered? All right, great. So, so if I look back and I say, what, is, what does that monetization take that I just talked about with the, um, uh, the differentiated customer and how you want to maybe give a mobility play on it? Be able to actually do that, not make it just more of an authentication authorization. You need policy. So I needed to have a network-facing policy service that will actually go and say, I know who you are, customer, and I know you have this type of service, and that on this network path, or on this device, or on this type of service you're doing, I can give you this service level with what you're doing. I, I get a manager kind of, kind of tunnel and traffic shape based off that subscriber or that customer's package they purchased, whether they're on the home network or the out of the, out of the home networks, using policy. Justin, let's turn to quality of experience for the cable subscriber. What kinds of technological advancements are needed to enable QOE for Wi-Fi customers? To really translate the policies that Ken referred to over into the uh, kind of DOCSIS and wireless world, it's important to map those policies to the technologies and QoS levels that have been defined by cable labs and technologies like DOCSIS that actually deliver the wired service to Wi-Fi where policies put forth in, in Wi-Fi for things like WMM uh, or wireless multimedia that map specifically to uh, services like voice, services like video to make sure that higher prioritized packets are delivered before best effort. And stepping back a little bit, once you've enabled this service differentiation, it becomes more and more important to focus on customer experience and putting in an infrastructure to collect metrics uh, and ingest those into the business and make sure that each entity within the business understands more about how that customer ex is experiencing the network and can trigger proactively resources to engage when that quality of service dips below an acceptable level. Ken, back to you. What does quality experience actually mean for the customer specifically? What kinds of things does it enable for customers? 
If I'm able to use these KPIs, I'm able to take those analytics that I get from those devices, from the networks, from the different layers of, of analytic probes in a sense that we put in there. If I'm able to take that and get back to the customer, I know that your end device is experiencing this and I can manage what's going on because I see, or I predict a degradation is occurring somewhere in the network or maybe on the device or maybe it's the access point, et cetera, then I can actually manage that back and give that customer experience a good quality. So you're not, let's say you're watching a video on the go and you get that buffering. Well, we don't want the buffering. We want a good video experience. So if I'm managing across your networks, your transitions, and everything else, I can give you that quality experience. That's what we want to get. Okay, Justin, your turn. How does Cable Labs view Wi-Fi first? And is Wi-Fi first a viable option for the cable industry? So certainly, so we uh, at Cable Labs are focused on technologies that our members uh, deploy, of which different product verticals could be built on. Of course, one of those being Wi-Fi first, and clearly with as large as the wireless network is getting uh, into the millions of access points in the U.S. and tens of millions uh, internationally with all the cable companies, uh, you can definitely start to ask a question. And uh, if you look at the other building blocks that are fundamental to Wi-Fi first, beyond Wi-Fi, the first of them becomes a, uh, a willing MBNO partner as integrating between a cable's wireless network and a cellular operator uh, takes a, a willing partner to do that. Uh, beyond that, um, you also need technology that transparently, as Ken alludes to, allows the user to move between the different access networks, whether it's cable's Wi-Fi, uh, or uh, an MBNO partner cellular network, and uh, those tools are, are definitely in place. Okay, thanks very much, Justin, and thanks very much, Ken, for joining us here and talking about how to optimize and monetize Wi-Fi.